On November 1, 2001, the morning after Halloween, Columbia Daily Tribune sports editor Kent Heitholt was murdered in the Tribune's North parking lot. He was beaten 11 times with a tire iron, but died as a result of being strangled with his own belt. For two and a half years, the Columbia Police Department could locate no suspects until Chuck Erickson had a dream he may have been involved. Based almost entirely on this, Erickson and Ryan Ferguson were convicted of the murder and sentenced to lengthy prison terms. This presentation will examine the ever-changing story of Michael Boyd, a co-worker who worked under Heitholt. Despite his inability to keep the details of his encounter with the victim minutes before his death straight, he was never considered a suspect. These are the five stories of Michael Boyd. The first interview was conducted by Detective John Short of the Columbia Police Department at 3.30 a.m. on November 1, 2001. The interview was conducted via telephone and recorded in police report number 18. Boyd told Detective Short he left promptly after 2 a.m. when the Tribune's computer system shut down. Boyd said he talked to Mike Henry, a member of the private janitorial staff that cleaned the building, for five to ten minutes outside the door to the Tribune's north parking lot. Boyd said as the two were talking, Ken Heitholt walked past them and out to his vehicle. Boyd said he held a conversation with Heitholt about a cat that had been clawing his tire. Boyd said that after the conversation ended, he went to his car and left the parking lot at about 2.20 a.m. He noted that as he was leaving, Heitholt was entering his vehicle, but he saw no one else in the parking lot. At 2.26 a.m., 911 was alerted to Heitholt's lifeless body. Interview number two was conducted by Detective Lloyd Simons of the Columbia Police Department at 11.45 p.m., November 1, 2001. The interview was conducted in person at the Tribune's office and recorded in police report number 25. In Boyd's second story, he told Detective Simons that after working with Heitholt throughout the night, he began leaving around 2 a.m. Boyd said that after several detours, he made it out the back door and talked with Henry for several minutes. At 2.10 a.m., Boyd said he walked across the lot, got in his car, and started adjusting his radio. Boyd said that after doing this for two to three minutes, he observed Heitholt emerge from the building. Remember, in Boyd's previous story only 19 hours earlier, Heitholt had preceded Boyd to the lot while he held a conversation with Henry. Boyd said he backed his car up, drove south through the lot, pulled up to Heitholt, and the two held a three to five minute conversation.
Boyd stated he left the lot sometime between 2.15 and 2.20 a.m. and again saw nothing suspicious in the area. Interview number three was conducted by private investigator Jim Miller on February 14, 2005. The interview was conducted via telephone. In this story, Boyd again said he preceded the victim into the parking lot at 2 a.m. and walked to his blue Oldsmobile, which was parked in the lot just west of the Tribune parking lot. In this version, Boyd said he went to his car, which was parked facing in a southeast direction, giving clear view of the Tribune's back door. He said he sat, quote, listening to music from a cassette tape, end of quote, until he noticed the victim walk out of the Tribune building to his own car. He said that upon seeing Heidholt, Boyd drove south to the alley, then east, then north, stopping behind Mr. Heidholt's car, where they engaged in a short conversation between 2.10 and 2.15 a.m., lasting approximately one to two minutes. Boyd states he exited by driving north out of the parking lot, and he said he observed Heitholt's taillights come on. He said, quote, Kent drove off the parking lot as I was driving off, end of quote. At this point in the interview, it is noted that Boyd became very emotional and was allowed time to regain his composure. He then restated that he pulled out of the parking lot and assumed Heitholt was behind him. Investigator Miller then asked Boyd if he knew whether the police were aware that he was the last person on record to see Hyde Holt alive, to which he responded yes. Miller asked if police had requested to look at his clothes from the night, photographed his vehicle, checked his car for prints, searched the interior for blood or other evidence, or came to his house to look for evidence. Boyd said that they had not and asked why they would want to do any of these things. Miller responded that as a matter of routine, it would be important to do these things since he was the last person on record to see Heitholt alive. In response, he said that he knew Detective Short and Kevin Crane very well and that he had actually contacted Kevin Crane prior to this interview to, quote, make sure it was all right, end of quotes. Of note, in Michael Boyd's first interview, police report number 18, Detective Short listed his race as white. Interview number four was conducted by Boone County Prosecutor's Office lead investigator Bill Hawes on July 24, 2005. The interview was conducted in person. In this report, Boyd acknowledged police reports number 18 and number 25 without a timeline but added two crucial new details. The first was his assertion that he was driving a red 1992 Plymouth on the night in question. Boyd said he had been driving the car to work regularly and was sure he was driving it that night.
second was that after talking to Heidholt, Boyd now reported seeing two college-aged males standing near a set of dumpsters to his right as he turned from the Tribune parking lot into the alley leading west toward Providence. Boyd said he could not identify the individuals or describe their clothing, but told Haas that he thought nothing of it because they looked, quote, all right. Interview number five was conducted by private investigator Matthew Allen on June 5th, 2006. The interview was conducted in person. This time, Boyd says he didn't leave the Tribune building until 2.10 a.m., at which point he said that he sat in his car listening to three or four songs on the radio before Heitholt exited the building. During the interview, Boyd made a crucial contradiction to statements he had previously made during his interview with Boone County investigator Bill Hawes, stating, quote, I was driving my blue car that night, and if I was sitting in it right now, I could punch those buttons right now and tell you what stations they were. End of quote. After telling Hawes that he was sure he was driving his 1992 Red Plymouth, he now tells Allen he was driving his blue car, a 1991 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. Three to four songs would now put the time that Boyd said Heitholt exited the building at about 2.20 a.m. Boyd said the two had a four to five minute conversation before he turned west down the alley toward Providence. Boyd's four to five minute conversation has him leaving the scene at 2.24 to 2.25 a.m. This would be only one to two minutes before 911 was called in response to Heitholt being discovered to have been beaten 11 times with a tire iron, strangled to death, and had his vehicle rummaged through. Again, Boyd mentions the two college-aged white males, but this time, instead of merely seeing the two and thinking nothing of it because they looked all right, he now says he almost hit them and had been worried they would write down his license number. Despite the many contradictions in Boyd's stories, his house was never searched, neither car was ever searched, and Boyd was never considered a suspect in the case. Attempts to locate Boyd's Blue Oldsmobile have been unsuccessful. Boyd claims he traded the car into Enterprise Rent-A-Car in the mid-2000s. However, Enterprise has no record of this, and the Missouri Department of Revenue showed the car still titled a Boyd as late as 2010. For more information on this case, visit freeryanferguson.com.